Hello and welcome this week to the Hope Bible Story. Uh, this week uh, we are talking about Job. It's actually the first part of the story of Job, and Job's a really long book. Uh, so a great exercise for any teacher to do is to listen to the whole book or read the whole book. Uh, the middle section moves a little slowly. It's long poetry, but interesting to do for anybody who wants to teach it. Uh, but today we're just looking at the very first part of the book. Um, the PowerPoint uh, has the, the whole thing on it, but I'm just going to share the first part of the story, and then we'll get into the faculty Bible study uh, to help us apply it to our lives. The, the first part is we're looking at how Job really showed himself to be great at the beginning. Uh, Job had a little hiccup towards the end, but it doesn't show up in the first week. Uh, it doesn't show up in this story, uh, so we highlight Job's great example for us to be uh, that same way. But let's take a look at the story. Uh, now, first of all, we don't know when uh, when Job happened. We're not sure when it occurred. It just kind of shows up uh, and it tells us the story, but it's a real historical happened. And uh, Job was a man of great means, a leader, a hero. All kinds of people knew him. And he was famous for being upright and feared God, the Bible says. He did amazing, wonderful things. He had a great life and he served the Lord with it. In fact, if you look at the listing of blessings he has, you can see he's got seven sons, three three daughters, 3,000 camels, 7,000 sheep, 500 uh, cattle, and 500 uh, oxen. It's just amazing what he's all got. That's, I mean, that's wealth right there. They didn't necessarily always have money, um, but they had animals. And even today, if the, you owned all that, you would be worth a lot. But uh, big, especially in the mind of Job's time, was having those seven sons and those three daughters, spectacular. Ten kids, uh, a real a wealth, and he had everything. Everything was going great, and Job wasn't a bad rich guy. He was a good rich guy. He gave the Lord credit for it, and he was a good steward of everything the Lord had given him. But the Bible tells us that uh, when the angels went and talked to heaven, Satan slipped in. And I'm not sure why I, I took a, a draw Satan that way. He's got a Van Dyke... Uh, beard on. Uh, you don't see his eyes. I tend to draw angels that way. Uh, but that is uh, a picture of Satan. And we don't understand this. We don't quite uh, know how this really works. But this is a glimpse of how the spiritual kingdom works that the Bible gives us. Uh, and Satan, uh, the enemy, the accuser, uh, spoke to God and said, if you take what Job has, he will surely curse you. Accusing Job of only following God because things are easy. He's only doing it because, man, he gets his way. Uh, and the Lord said, okay. And we don't fully understand why the Lord allows. Uh, he doesn't cause bad things. doesn't cause sin, but he allows uh, bad things to happen. He said, you may do this. You may uh, take away what Job has, but you can't harm his own body. And so the story tells us about how, how catastrophe after catastrophe happened, where a disaster took place. And everybody died, and there was just one person left. Job lost all of his kids, all of his wealth, everything in one day. Everything was gone. But, the, but Job showed himself to be spectacular. He had praised the Lord the day before, and today when he lost everything, he said, The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. In the name of the Lord, be praised. That moment, Job himself seemed to be absolutely phenomenal. But yet again, Satan came one more time and says, I, I know he's good right now, but if he hit his own body, if he hurt his body, then he's going to curse you. Again, we don't understand it. This is for the blessing of God's people and for God's glory. He said, you may do this. You may hurt his body, but don't take his life. So again, God allows Satan only so much. Uh, and what happened was Job got these amazing, terrible, painful boils and sores, and it was awful. He looked awful, probably smelled awful, he felt awful. Uh, everything was absolutely bad. Uh, and he looked like a big, huge loser. Uh, Job's wife, who uh, again notice in the story that Job lost everybody, but not his wife didn't exactly jump on the Job bandwagon. And she said, uh, Job, why don't you curse God and die? Why don't you abandon your relationship with God and just let yourself die? Um, she was going through a lot too, but she didn't have the same attitude as Job. 
Job said we need to accept good and bad from God. He had this faith that he just trusted the same God I had a week ago, the same God I had 10 years ago, as the same God. He loves me. And Job showed his faith by talking about how uh, he knows his Redeemer lives, that God was going to buy him back. He knew about the coming Savior, Jesus. And that's what gave him confidence. If God would take care of that big thing, eternal life, God would take care of redeeming him, buying back, buying him back from sin, then whatever God has for him today, whether blessing or problems, it has got to be the right thing for him according to a plan in God. So much smarter than me, Job showed uh, his faith. And then this is where the this, this story transitions into the second part. We're going to pick up next week with Job's uh, three friends and what they said um, and his friend Elihu, and then God's going to uh, bless him at the end. But I'm going to let you cover that next week. Instead, let's go to our um, Bible study and take a look at some of the things that um, that we got here. Take a look at the Bible study. Um, again, we're talking about integrity, so really focus on those first two chapters of Job. Um, and again, we don't know who Job was. Uh, you can Google things and discover that some people think uh, he was the grandson of Esau. Uh, the Hebrew of it, if you look at the Hebrew, it's it's old form Hebrew, so it seems like it may have been uh, earlier, I mean, earlier than Moses, but we don't know how or when. But this book addresses the question of why bad things happen to good people, even happen to to God's children. And we're going to discover the answer isn't really solved. It isn't logical. The big answer in the book is you don't know. God knows. God loves you no matter what. Trust him. You aren't God. Don't try to be God. Don't pretend to be God. Let God be God and you can just be his child. So God doesn't answer us, but he scolds us and puts us in our place. He says, trust me, I'm your father. I love you. And that's mostly shown by Jesus. Um, I, I ask you to, in the intro, uh, do you know the nicest person that have had the worst thing happen? Uh, or maybe do you know somebody who is mad at God? Uh, I've met people that are mad at God. Sometimes it's because their spouse died or their child died or their parent died or um, they didn't get the job or something. Often it's a tragedy that's real. And in that moment, they ran away from God and they're still running away. And this book is written for people who feel that. Um, it says, describe Job, who is someone else that is similar to him. Um, to someone else that's amazing in the Bible like this. Maybe it's, uh, uh, I don't know, Abraham? No, Abraham had some bad times. Uh, is it any of the apostles? No, maybe. Uh, maybe not. You look for people that are just constantly good. Even Moses had a number of bad days. Job is pretty awesome in here, um, especially even where he not only loves his family, but he just prays extra for his kids. Um, and just in case, he wants to make sure that he he connects them to Jesus, worried about his legacy, his spiritual legacy. Um, Job 19.25, is that's the words of Job. And if you go down to the bottom of the page, you can see that. Um, Job says, I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. Job, we don't know how he knows, uh, but he had heard the promise made maybe to Adam and Eve passed on from uh, father to child. And now he knew that God was going to buy him back and, and save him. We don't know how much he fully understood about how the plan would be carried out. We don't know where in time he was, but he knew that God was going to send uh send his one and only son to pay for the sins of the world. Somehow he knew that, and that's what gave him faith. That's what gave him strength. And that's why that is uh, a verse that's often quoted on Easter or one that is used for Easter hymns. So as Job had true faith in the Lord. Uh, number three, Satan is the accuser. How does he accuse us like he accused Job? Uh, he said, hey, Job's only fallen because of this. His uh, following of the Lord, his Sonship is only on the outside. It's not real. It's not based upon something. In a similar way, uh, Job accuses us, maybe to God like this, but also in our own ears, saying, you're not really, you know, you're not really a child of God. You're not really. Can you see this? this you look at that other person. He might be, but you aren't. Gives us doubt. He loves to whisper that in our ears and help us think that God doesn't love us. I think when we go through a tragedy, he whispers and says, hey, so this is a sign God isn't there for you. 
uh, you've got to look somewhere else. Uh, and if we listen to that voice, we'll end up running away uh, and despairing, being mad at God. What big question comes up in this section? And that is, why, why would God allow this bad thing to happen? Why would God allow this to happen? And the resolution does not come until the end of the book. And the resolution is not what Job maybe wanted or what we would want. We'd love to know why. We'd love to have an answer that's not going to happen. If we're good enough, uh, we'll never have tragedy. God does not explain why, nor does he feel like he has to. His big answer in the end is, Job, I'm God. You're not. Let me be God. I'm, I'm the one choosing. Be happy with what I give you. It's gracious and wonderful. In heaven, you're going to be awesome. It's a tough answer. Not everybody wants to hear that. Um, here is the big kind of everything going on. Describe Job's faith and integrity that he holds true, even when the greatest of tragedies you can imagine hits in one day, and even when he gets bad advice from his, his wife. Everyone else, nobody would have blamed him for being mad and like cursing God and being really mad that day, at least taking a day, a day to be mad, but he doesn't. He shows himself and accepts what his authority with the Lord has given him. How will you apply this story uh, to your classroom this week? I think you can let scholars talk about, you know, bad things that have happened in their life. It could be some really sad stories um, and talk about how that doesn't mean God isn't good, how God doesn't have a plan. Uh, it can bring up uh, Job's faith. It can bring up Romans 8 verse 18 or 28 or 38 and talk about um, how we still have that promise of God. We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him. You can share uh, bad things in your life, tragedies that you're, you can open up the newspaper uh, and talk about it, the good and the bad. we got to trust that God knows what he's doing. In the same way, for our scholars, they need to trust teachers that maybe they don't understand why teachers do this, why they have this policy or plan. Trust me, this is, a, this is good for you. Trusting our authorities is similar to trusting God, except our authorities mess up, but God never does. So some uh, Christ College character points here. Uh, Job showed his faith in Christ. Highlight that verse that's down here. That's how you get over tough times. That's how you get integrity. That's where you get the power from, knowing God is taking care of the big thing. Uh, for college, we may dream, work, and pray, but tragedy may still impede our plans. We are not guaranteed a 70-year-old uh, life where things go well and we don't have a car accident. Uh, we can plan and pray and work, but it does not mean that God is going to necessarily give it to us. He may know we need that tragedy to keep us close to him. He may know that others around us need that tragedy to keep them close to him. He's always looking for the eternal good, and but we can only see the present and we can judge what we think is good. Character? Ah. Oh. Tragedy and troubled times. That's when we need the power to show integrity. We need the power of Christ. Only way to do that. Um, so some ideas, what you can do in your classroom. Um, it'd be interesting to have people list everything they have, stuff and people. I mean, their personal stuff or maybe their family stuff. And try to imagine it being gone. What would they be most upset about? What if everything disappeared today? Um, make the what happened to Job real. Um, and then have him go from there being content with what the Lord says. Oh, anyway, me... Uh, this story uh, focus us not on our stuff or our good present times, but on God's eternal plan uh, that covers us in Jesus. Lord's blessing to you as you do that in your class.